11. The, the author there quotes the Misceptor of it. It is so different from the Hebrew original. He makes a whopping mistake in... No, 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 that's no, no sorry, sorry, you, you just interrupt me. Let me just finish. Yeah. He makes a whopping mistake in translation. This is acknowledged by Hebrew scholars. I think it's 11. He talks about where uh, there's a prophecy uh, uh, to, to, to where it says in the prophets that God will prepare a body for his son. This is the incarnation. And he quotes, I think it's from a psalm. But this psalm, if you look in this Bible, any modern Bible, it, translating it from the Hebrew, the original, the one you say is inspired, doesn't have that. It's, and according to James Barr, who's a professor of Hebrew at Oxford University, who, I, who told me about this, uh, this is based on a, a, a very obvious misunderstanding of what the Hebrew says. This is something he understands why a mistake was made. But the point is, it's a point of doctrine has been established. A point of fundamental Christian theology is being asserted here based on a mistake, an, an error in the translation okay, of the, the, the Bible. The full so so when you say it's trivial and it doesn't is, matter, is, it matters big time. This is the problem you've made. You've said that the, the text, the Hebrew text we have today is the thing that I was calling inspired. That's yes. not the case. Oh, okay. I don't agree that the Hebrew... So the Masoretic is not inspired? Order. No, I don't agree, agree that the translation is 100%. No, is it's a Masoretic. Is, is a Masoretic inspired? No, the Masoretic is not. Bro, are you going to let me speak? Wow. I can explain what I'm saying. I'm saying the Masoretic is not as faithful to the original text as the Septuagint is. What original text? We don't have the, the original text. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, I'm but saying how do you know it's not faithful if it, we don't have it? the Septuagint lines up more with older manuscripts like Such the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls are much more recent. The 2nd century BC. The oldest of yeah. Dead Sea Scrolls is, is second, 200 BC. Yeah, but the Masoretic... Uh, at least in theory, goes back way. The Hebrew goes right way before. Yeah, but that. where's the actual physical? What well, you tell me exactly? No, that's my point. That's so my, my point. So, so how so do you know the Masoretic is not as faithful as older texts? We don't have the older texts because the oldest oldest text we have lines up with the Septuagint. Okay. So can so, we, so okay. I, I would go with the one that's closest to the time of the prophet, which would be the Dead Sea Scrolls, right? And, and they're about 200 BC, the oldest, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and when did Moses live? So I wouldn't say that Moses. Just I wouldn't say. First of all, I wouldn't say that Moses wrote the entire uh, entirety of the Torah. While he would have wrote parts of it, it would have also been compiled by. So, so when did Moses live, roughly? I don't know. Well, should we say 2000 BC? Is that fair enough? I don't do textual criticism. No, no, it's not. It's a question of history. When did the historical Moses actually live on this planet? When was he alive? Should we say 3, about yeah, well, 3,000 BC? Okay, I, I, we'll go with this. So we'll go with 3,000 BC. The Dead Sea Scrolls, the oldest copies of the Old Testament we have, are 200 BC. Yeah. So we have a gap of over two and a half thousand years where we have nothing at all. But I, How can you be sure that it's reliable if it's copied and copied and copied and copied over thousands of years? How do we know corruptions didn't come in? Errors? People change the text. Now, That's what big, happens. It begs the question of why should I rely on the Quran? No, no, I'm talking about, we're oh, talking about the Quran. We're talking about Moses. Moses wrote the Pentateuch, or they're yeah. part of it. But the earliest text we have are thousands yeah, of years later. It would be by how do you how do we know they're reliable? I don't use textual criticism to say that they're reliable. My point for okay. why they're reliable. What do you rely on then? My point for why they're reliable is coherency and interconnections between the two. For example, I see I see fulfilled prophecies to the to the to the point where I don't think these prophecies could be just faked. I don't think I think that the New Testament is so coherent in the context of the Old Testament that I I think that's a proof. In do you know why scholars don't think that Moses has anything to do with Matthew? Mark, with, sorry, the Pentateuch, the first five books. Of the Old but Testament. I, will, I already and There are good reasons why, because it contains a lot of anachronisms, it mentions the names of people and cities and places which they did have many, many centuries after the time of Moses, which suggests but, that they were written long after Moses, but, because but Moses on. himself could not have known these but places. I, 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 there, I, I can email you examples. I, they're, they're names of cities and I, people. I, I, already is, I don't even laugh, but you see, this is what mainstream biblical scholarship is known for I, centuries. I, I this is not something I looked in last week. This I is, already this is mainstream. But I will already granted to you that past the Pentateuch would have been written and compiled by Ezra and his companions. So I already granted that to you, so you're... you're yeah, you said of, part of it was by Moses. Yeah. Well, well, it's a straw man, because you're, you're refuting a position which I haven't posited. I didn't so, say that Moses wrote most of it. So how much of Pentateuch did Moses write I can't then? tell. Sorry? I, I can't tell you. I don't know. Is it virtually nothing? I can't tell you. I don't okay. know. Half of it? 
I, I just told you, I can't tell okay. you. I don't know. The thing is, because we don't know who wrote it, when it was written, and if it's reliable, this is the problem. But we said, don't know the answer to these questions. I said it would have come down... And yet you believe it's inspired. So it would have come down from the Orient... Uh, oral oral tradition. Oral tradition. From okay. a national grade level. Okay. Okay. The, is, the Israelites... Uh, okay, so wait. Now that's a good answer. I mean, okay. Okay. Yeah, carry yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Explain. So, so the Israelites yep. back then, before Christ, were very strict. Were very strict with their beliefs and very strict with keeping the text. I like, think you'll find that was the rabbinical tradition after the time of Jesus, when this this care that you accurately call that described really was a feature of Judaism. But before that, that didn't exist. This is anachronistically reading it back in, into time. Well, because if you look at the manuscript tradition, the, the Masoretic text, the Septuagint, uh, the Samaritan Pentateuch, and other uh, 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 textual traditions of the Old Testament we no longer have, but we know they exist because they're quoted by the people. We, have, we see huge, we have, huge diversity in in the Old Testament text. They, even the Dead Sea Scrolls, for example, the Book of Jeremiah in the Dead Sea Scrolls is much, much longer than the Dead Sea than the Jeremiah in this Bible. It's not yeah, the yeah. same. So I think this all this strict oral tradition doesn't really well, work. In, wait, wait, wait. in this Bible, yes, we're talking about the Masoretic text. Yes. Okay, yes, so exactly. About, what, so the Dead Sea Scrolls. What about is, the okay, I'm saying the Book of Jeremiah in the Dead Sea Scrolls is much, much longer, <laughs> in, in physically longer than the one in the Masoretic text. So which one is the Word so of what God? I'm asking you about this. So which is the Word of God? You asked you about the Septuagint. The Septuagint also has many differences to the Masoretic no, but in terms in of, translation. In terms of Jeremiah, I've given you an example from Hebrews. Yeah, but he's asking you in terms of Jeremiah. Example, what, yeah, what about the Septuagint? Oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know. It's on my head. I don't know. That. I was just pointing out the difference in Dead Sea Scrolls, the earliest Jewish Bible, and and the Masoretic text. No, we say that the Masoretic There, there are lots of differences. Wait, wait. So this whole thing about strict oral tradition doesn't really work. We've got the Samaritan Pentateuch, another Jewish, what they would call, they would say, is a Jewish uh, Israelite translation. Wait, the Samaritan what? The, the Samaritan Pentateuch. Pentateuch. Yeah, is actually it's... another Old Testament. And then there are other textual traditions said it's Jewish, which, which also, yeah, I, I know Samaritan that they, I know that Israelites don't think so, but the Samaritans themselves do oh, think they are. Okay. They would, yeah, I, I'm, I'm defining it from their point of view. They think they're the people of God, of Israel. Yeah, yeah, but not, they, they do. No, you, but, yeah, but you may disagree, but they think they are. That's fine. Okay, but that doesn't um, mean anything to us because uh, the Samaritans okay. are still considered heretics because they only accepted the five books of the yeah, I'm not talking. I'm not making theological judgments about whether or not they're correct. I'm saying there are lots and lots of well, Old Testaments we need to, we need and to they do don't always stuff. agree with each other. But, but so sure, this idea but, of strict tradition doesn't work in but, but hold on, people can alter texts. That's, that's inherently, that's a thing that can happen. So you can say the Samaritan Pentateuch and we're just saying there's no... <laughs> There's no evidence that the Samaritans are inspired. Therefore, have you looked into it? I've looked into Samaritans to some degree. So you, you, you've got good arguments why their that, why their no, no, is not inspired. No, by no, God. I don't. But I, I know okay. some of I know some of the difference. You, you know, biblical scholars reference they look at the Samaritan Pentateuch when yeah. they translate the Bible. It, you sometimes see it mentioned the bottom of bi Bibles. It actually says Samaritan Pentateuch says X or whatever. They're aware of it and they use it in the translation of. Their modern yeah, translation. Yeah, but so they give it some respect. They're doing, they they're give doing, it respect. They're doing so because they want to use variant variant readings to give us what what the best version yeah, they get. Yeah, not absolutely. even the best the, the version. Best translation. It's just giving yeah, us exactly. different translations so we know we've got a lot to work. With. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. They use all the sources. They that doesn't make, mean they can, that yeah. that material is inspired or that material is correct. No, but they think it's inspired. No. no. What, the, the, the Samaritans think their their Jewish their but Bible they think, is inspired. They think yeah, but that, but, they that yeah. but you see, I, I asked you if you thought your Bible, the Septuagint, which is quoted in the New Testament all the time, if that was inspired. Yeah. And after a rather painful discussion, you said no. Even though that's the no. very translation, the Bible itself quotes them all the through the Testament. I said, I said the translation itself isn't inspired. Yeah. I, the, or, that the translators weren't literally writing God breathed. I think the New Testament author thought it was inspired because they quote from it as scripture. Yeah, because they're quoting as from God the, says in His Word, and then they quote from the Scripture again. They don't yeah, quote from the Masoretic. It's like it's like me quoting from the Bible in English and saying this is inspired. There's no problem with that. No, but for them, but the, the, okay. the people who translated it into in English could have made a minor mistake. But Paul himself matter. says the Septuagint is inspired by God. Yeah. Into Timothy but, three. No, no, no. He said the scriptures are inspired. No, well, I, no, no, the Greek is uh, God breathed. He said the scriptures. That, that's the technical. That's the literal meaning. meaning that the yeah, yeah. Be but uh, well, I, I, he said so the scriptures. We'd have to, we have to ask Paul what he meant by that. I mean, I, I, I can't. He says so I, I'm, I'm not the Apostle Paul. Listen, so. He says the scriptures are good. That's that doesn't contradict our opinion. 
I don't know. He says this is such a new form childhood. I don't know what Paul meant. I don't know what Paul meant. It's just that he's reading our translation. What do you think? You're a Christian. What do you think your apostle meant by it? When you tell someone it's like a semantic issue, that's not really an issue. If I say I'm reading the Quran in English, let's say I'm reading it in English, and I said, wow, this is the book that Allah gave to Muhammad. There's no problem with that, even though technically it's a translation of the book. And technically the translators themselves did not receive revelation from God to write from that. It's a semantic issue. It's not semantic from the context. context. Uh, Let me tell you why. Because because the, scriptures the, Timothy, the scriptures that Timothy knew would have been the Septuagint. Yeah. And, they're going to be uh, and Paul said that's not true. Really can I, can I read the Quran in English and say, say well, this let's is say the uh, Do you know about the God. earliest canon in the New Testament? I can, but it's in English. The moratorium fragment. Oh, but from the context you understand, you're not speaking about the translation. And again, and again, from the context of Paul's second Timothy 3.16, I would again say that the context is not actually in the translation from Paul which are no longer part of the Bible, neither in your canon or in that canon. They may have had different canons. So, for Septuagint has actually Yeah, I agree with the They may have had different canons, but that doesn't mean they disagree on the book specifically. So, I'm not going to say that. For example, the Codex Sinaiticus, they have the... But, you know, in the Orthodox Bible, is that infallible? It has... The translation would be different from the translation of the Septuagint. Like, it's not like a word for word yes, translation from the but you, you but from what I understand they've combined like Hebrew uh, manuscripts as well as Greek manuscripts yeah, but this is and they've translated so well, it's like, I, I don't see a problem with using the Maserati text. It's very helpful, it's good. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, For example, in the Maseratic text, you see the problem of 42 and 20. That's a minor numerical problem. It doesn't actually, it doesn't actually change the way you read it. But if you read the ELS, it's not in any modern Bible. The Shepherd of Hermes is not in any modern Bible. You believe it. Then again, I'm saying different canons. You're making up your canon as you go along. If you read the ELS you're going to get something that's close to the original where I said 20 and 22 and that's just the difference of rounding where you see 80 and 80 and 72 it's the same thing you, you sometimes round them down um, so there's not the contradiction in the ELXS where there is a con but in the LXX where there is a contradiction in the Maserati. That's one of the reasons I would take the, year, the LXX to be more correct than the Maserati. There's no problem with reading the Maseretic text as long as you realise that there's some things that are slightly mistranslated. And there's not no problem with it. Really the same with if, if I read the well. can I read the Quran in English and mm -hmm. accept that some things are slightly mistranslated and still uh, accept that they're correct? Like the whole book as well. Two different canons, but they never disagree. So again, I can still say the Quran is good read. No, no, they disagreed. They disagreed big time. Would you like to know why they disagree? How they disagree? Where evidence? When? Okay. In the Roman Empire, most people like today don't live in Jerusalem, in Israel. They live in the diaspora, in the great, great Roman. Yeah, you want to go to the Trinity. Many live in no, America. I mean See, you are in and my name is Salvation. At that time, most yes. Jews used the Septuagint. That's the whole point, this translation that was done. It contained more books than the Palestinian Hebrew original. So, it includes Ecclesiasticus, this bigger canon. It includes the Book of Wisdom. It includes Tobit. It includes a whole bunch of stuff written in Greek that's not in the Hebrew canon itself. So, the Jews did disagree big time in the first century about which books go in their Bible. You just showed me that they had a different canon. That yes, that's the point. The, the books that go into the Bible are different. And Again, it matters for doctrine. They had the Septuagint during because... the Roman Empire and yeah. they had Ezra's canon during the time yeah. when they left so, Babylon. But when you say Jews Maybe agreed, but in the first century, in Jesus' time, Jews disagreed. disagreed. For example... Where did they disagree? Well, with because a because this, the, the Greek-speaking Jews tend to accept the Greek uh, books in Greek, like the Book of Wisdom, but those in Palestine tend to accept the, the shorter Hebrew Bible, which didn't include these extra bits. And still today, if you look at a modern... Uh, the, the Jews tend not to accept these uh, Greek books. They accept the Hebrew books in Hebrew. So Jews did disagree then, and they disagree... I don't care about Before the Jews. That. Exactly. Oh, but you said that you, you said the Jews agreed. During the times of Christ and prior to the times of Christ. The time of Christ, they, they didn't agree. I've given you, I've given you, the, I've given you the reasons. Sorry? I, at the time of Jesus, in the first century, yes. diaspora Jews used the Greek translation, the others used the Hebrew, and there were different canons. 
again, I'm going to say, having a different canon doesn't inherently mean that they disagree with each other on you know, the different books. By definition it does, because the canon is a list of books. It doesn't, again, I would say. I'm not, I don't, I, are you aware of the epistle? That he's a Christian. Are you aware of the epistle of Barnabas that, that was in the Codex Sinaiticus? Yeah. Yeah. Would you disagree? Do you disagree on the epistle of Barnabas? Because like, it was part of the Codex Sinaiticus. Yeah. Is it scripture? Would, would you consider it still scripture? So I think in order for it to be categorized as scripture, it has to meet like four criteria, right? It has to be used in some churches for instruction. It has to be like at least dated to be uh, within the first century for the New Testament Gospels. Uh, New Testament uh, criteria. It has to be tied back. Is, uh, is that is that your book? Yeah, you tie back to a identifiable apostle from the apostolic age. So if it doesn't meet those criteria, then you could judge it on that grounds. But I don't think well, no, you can have it back now. For toothless in any major church, I don't believe so. Maybe it, 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 it was used because they, okay. it was part of the canon in the Codex Sinaiticus. Sure, which is fine, but, but then was exactly. it, which church was it used in? No church was used in because it was a yeah. canon for everyone, which was part of the Codex Sinaiticus. We have an expansive canon, it, it's not exactly. limited to you know, sure. because we have Different canons. churches in the early uh, centuries had different uh, books they accepted as scripture. Sure. For example, one Enoch was accepted as some, the Epistle of Barnabas was as well, uh, the Didache. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the list of. Uh, the, 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 the list uh, 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 Didache was accepted by some Christians as no scripture. scripture. It, it wasn't, well, okay, I'm, I'm not going to debate him, I'm going to discuss with you. So, so, please don't lie to me because you also gave me some examples prior to this, but you wouldn't inherently show me Prior to, prior to what? Like when, when him and me were talking to you, you gave us examples, for example, in Hebrews chapter 11, you said that it contradicts something in some No, no, it's a mistranslation, a mistranslation of the Hebrew. This is acknowledged by academics. You didn't show me. Sorry? You didn't show me. Oh, well, 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 I'll show you. Oh, okay, show me. Okay, go so, what did you want to uh, the the, uh, the passage in Hebrews is it chapter eleven where it misquotes? Is it chapter eleven? From the Lord out of heaven. Either eleven or ten. Yeah. The Lord brings fire. I'm just trying to uh, identify the uh, passage. From the Lord, so the Lord brings something from the Lord out of heaven. So how many lots of Is that not implying two persons who are Lord? But you said triune God. Yeah. Yeah, it is chapter ten. So it's Hebrews chapter ten. This is the NIV, which is an evangelical translation. Do you, do you, do you object to that? Yeah, yeah, let's, do you, again, again, again. Yeah? let's not use the NIV. Well, which translation would you like? No, just tell me. Can I? Can I? Okay, NRSV. NRSV. C. What's the C stand for? Oh, you're Roman Catholic. Why are you using a Catholic translation? Because I've seen that it's more. But just use the NRSV. It doesn't have to be Catholic, just use the standard version. Uh, new, re new revised. There you are, Anglican. Uh, okay. Right. Yep, this is fine. So this is uh, Hebrews chapter 10. So, I mean, this is. I don't know if you want to read this yourself, but therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said. Sacrifice and offering you desire, but a body you prepared for me. This is the incarnation, yeah? Uh, with burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, here I am. It's written about me in the scroll. I have come to you to do my will. So this is about this is an important point of Christian doctrine. It's been predicted, prophesied from the scriptures. Um, and it is Psalm, oh look, see, see the footnote, Psalm 40, verses 6, 8, see Scepter again. Okay, wait, close so, it, close so, it, so, so, I, close I, it, let me take a picture. Remember, yeah. Are you having a close, close it, close it. What did I say? Go up, let me quickly change the translation to my, can no, I, can no, no, I, no, I'm going to use my, I'm going to use my, because it's my special translation. This is unique. Can I use my translation? It's the NRSV. Why do you want to use my translation? It's the same as this one. It's the same. I know, I know, but I it's the Catholic know, edition. Know, it's the Catholic know, edition. Please, can I just use my translation? This is your translation. I just don't want to do that. That's it. There we go. It's no difference, trust me. It's no difference. Just in case. It's exactly the same as the one I've just quoted. I don't care. Right. So, coming here, we're looking at... Uh, can you look up Psalm 40? Verses six and eight in your in a modern Bible. Can we look in the modern Bible? Because I'm I've got a special point. Okay, we'll look up. So my, my, we, 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 the Bible's been used, so we we'll have to use another one. Can we, can we use the and now the Lord God has sent me. No, we're going to use a modern translation. No, no, I don't want to use the modern from the beginning. Hold on. You can research it yourself. You can research it yourself later on. Can I please use the interlinear? I'm going to begin. So what was it? Um, verse uh, Psalm 40. What was it? 
Uh, 6 to 8. So it's, uh, Psalm 40, verse 6 to 8. Uh, and it says here, there we are. In sacrifice and offering, you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. Burn offering and sin offering you have not required. You see, it talks here of an ear, which is actually the Hebrew, but in the... Uh, the Greek translation quoted by the Hebrews, it has body. This is a mistranslation, well understood by scholars of the Hebrew original by the Greek translation. You can pick any translation you like, it's exactly the same in all of them. Thank you. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. Open up what, sorry? Instead of a modern translation. Why, why don't you look it up? You, you, you can look it up. Okay. In partnership with the Lord God and His So there's a whopping big. Uh, uh, error about Christian doctrine in the New Testament, improving a point of doctrine from the Old Testament that doesn't actually exist. It's a really important point. Wait, 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 wait. Go back. Let's see. Is this the ELA? This is the King James Version, by the way. You're interlinear with KJV. You might want to have a, a modern translation. Oh, it's up to you. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's the same. The point will be the same anyway. Psalm 40, verse 5. Oh, this is verse 6. It's actually verse... It's verse 6 to 8. It's verse 6 to 8 in the Septuagint. So, so hold on, in, the, in that verse where you, and the first and the last, there is, there is no God. Besides me, there is no God. So you would agree that Revelation presents is there a, a is there a English translation? Can you see the R? Oh. Well, well, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Okay. So what does it change? So, so, so the Septuagint Sep Sep has a body I have prepared for you. This is a reference to the Incarnation. That's precisely why it's quoted. That's in the Greek, yeah. But it's a mistranslation of the original Hebrew, which doesn't have body. It has an ear. And again, It's a different, completely different point. Repeat, repeat that. Okay. In the Greek translation, remember the New Testament doesn't quote from the Hebrew Bible normally. It quotes from a translation, the Greek translation. Called the Septuagint. Well, unless you, so this is basic. This is basic stuff. If you look, well, when Paul quotes some scripture, what translation does he use? We can see that he also uses the Septuagint. He uses yeah, the, yeah, exactly. That's my point. The Greek translation. Yeah, we agree. We agree. So when you look at the Greek, the Greek, it's, uh, the Greek translation, the Septuagint, translated into English, it talks about in in Psalm 40 uh, about a body that has been prepared. It does say that. It's not. It's not a mistranslation. My point is, and this has been pointed out to me by Professor James Barr, Professor of Hebrew Bible at Oxford University, so it's not my idea. I don't read Hebrew. I read Greek, by the way, but I don't read Hebrew. It says, as all modern translations of the Psalms will say, doesn't have a body, it says in ear. And it's a common mistranslation, a mistake you'd like to make if you didn't know Hebrew very well. Experts no, wait, can, can see I, this. Can I, wait, can yeah. To bring up, I would like to but the, but the inspired Bible has because, done this. Because you know we we also see other passages like Hebrews chapter eight, where we see Paul oh. quoting from the Septuagint and it actually fixes the Masoretic. Oh, oh, oh. Could could you ask him to bring it again? Um, yeah, do you want to take it off? Yeah, I think we're going around the circles now. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to take a picture of Because, you know, we also see in the set, uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Yeah. What did you want to take a picture of? The interlinear. Yeah, yeah, the interlinear. You can, you can check this out at home. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's in your own time as well. I have it. I have it. Because we've seen, have any more we've seen Hebrews here? chapter 8, oh, we've seen Hebrews chapter 8, where Paul, uh, sorry folks, uh, has, uh, I've got two, okay, any ideas anyone? Which channel is this? I'm live.